All right, so in this video, let's talk about event listeners and how we assign event listeners to elements. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually just gonna simplify everything here. So let's just remove this comment and I'm gonna go to this header component and let's just keep a simple paragraph here. I'm gonna remove all of these arguments or props. Get rid of that too. And I'm also gonna rename this component or function, whatever you wanna call this. Let's just call it app. And we're gonna export that function, app. And now because this is now called app, we need to make those adjustments here. So now we're gonna importing that variable app from the file. Well, currently it's called header. We're probably gonna rename that too. Let's call that app as well. We'll rename this file that's called header. So I'm gonna right click, rename, and we'll just call it app. So now that should match this name. And finally, we need to call that function. So we'll do app, and we're not gonna be passing any arguments here. So we'll just leave it like this. So at this point, we just have a simplified version. We just have this app function or component that we're importing here. And we'll load it within this div with an ID app. And that will be this function right here. So if I just go ahead and do npm start, if you don't have it already running, that should run this. And if I open, we should have that some text. So now let's actually add a button here. And we'll just say, click me. Let's say we want to add an event listener to this button. When we click on a button, we want something to happen. In this case, I'm just gonna do a simple alert to just get a message on a screen. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go here, still within this function, I'm gonna create another function. And this will be the function that's gonna run when we click on the button. So we'll just say after click, just the function name, doesn't matter what you call this. And again, you can either do it this way or you can use this type of syntax. And it's really the same thing. So basically we have this function after click and we want that to run when we click on this button. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna go to this button and we're gonna add this on click property on this button and we're gonna make it equal that function after click. And because this is a function, it needs to be in this curly brackets. So basically it's interpreted as functions or variables we have here. And here we can basically tell it what to do when that's clicked. So in this case, I'll just do a regular alert and uh, we'll just say hi. So at this point, if I save this and go back and take a look, we have this button. If I click on it, see we have this alert. It says hi. Okay, so that's basically our event listeners. So this is equivalent to us doing like something like this. So if we had a regular button in our HTML with an ID BTN, then what we would do, we would create a function and then we would do something like document.getElementById and we would grab that btn button and on click, which is where we do this add event listener. So basically when we click on that button, we're gonna run that function after click. So this is the way we would write that JavaScript when we're not using React. But in case of React, we don't need to do this ID to get the button. We directly just do on click and what function we wanna run when that happens, just like that. Uh, one thing to mention here is that you'll notice that here click is lowercase. Here, you're always gonna have this on and then whatever the event is with an uppercase 
character. So if the event here is click, you'll have on click here. If the event you're going for here, for example, is let's say mouse enter, then you'll be doing on mouse enter and it's gonna go with this camel case convention. So it would look like on mouse enter, just like that. So that's the way you can find these events if you have to. Now I'm obviously gonna get rid of this because that's not something that's gonna work here, but we'll simply just do this. So with that same logic, see right now, when we click on that, it does this alert. So if I save this just to do it again, see, click on it, it does this. Now if I go and change that event from on click, the one that I just did a second ago, on mouse enter, basically we're saying when we roll over that button with our mouse, we wanna run this function. So at this point, if I go back and just see, I'm gonna go and go, 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 go. And as soon as I enter the button, see it runs the event and here we go. We got our message. And you can do a bunch of different events here. Now, once in a while, what you're gonna need to do, you need to get the event object from the element to be able to get some properties of that element. And for that, let's just take this button and switch it to a select element. So select will be our dropdown. So I'll just do a few different options. So that's our dropdown with three options. So if I save this, go back and take a look. See, we have our dropdown with three options. Now let's say we wanna run that function when we change this dropdown to a different selection. So for that, we can just go on the select and assign on change event. And we'll do that after click function again. So at this point, if I save this, go back. If I change this to banana, see it changed. So it's gonna run the function. You might want to know what was selected after this change. So after I change this, maybe you wanna get the value of that orange that was selected. And to do that, you would have to access this element. All we have to do, just go to this after click function and pass E to it. Inside of this E, if we just console log this, let's just actually remove this alert at this point. And let's just console log that E and we'll just check this results in our console instead of getting that annoying message. So if I save this, go back, let's actually open console right here. I'm gonna clear this. So if we go and change this to banana, see, I get an object. And if I open this, you'll see we have this object with all of this different properties on it. And if I keep scrolling down here, see we have the target and if I roll over it, see it basically gets that select element. So if we do e.target, we should be basically getting that element. So let's just console log that now. Change this. We get access to that select element. And inside of that select element, we should have a bunch of different things, including if I scroll down, we should have the value of that element. So this is at this point, just regular properties. We have value, which is Apple, which is the current selection. So if I just go back here and do target.value, that should get us what we need. So go back and if I change this to banana, See, it locks banana. If I do apple, we get apple. If I get orange, it gets orange. And that's pretty much as simple as that is. Now, finally, this brings me to one more thing you need to know about React event listeners compared to regular JavaScript event listeners. And for that, let me just remove this and replace it with an input box. And I'm gonna do type text. And again, I'm gonna add on change event 
to this. And I'm gonna call that same after click function. So again, similar to a select element, input elements have that value property and we should be able to access that and get the value basically within our input box. Now that being said, the way this reacts in React is different than it does in regular JavaScript. So just to show you what happens right now, if I save this and go back, see, I got this input box now. Let's just clear this. So if I go in here and type a character, see, as soon as I type H, that logs in a console. And you'll see with every keystroke, it basically keeps running that function. Now, this is not the way regular on change behaves in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, this would be more like input event. With every keystroke, you basically get an update which usually means you probably won't need to use like on input, on your input boxes. So that should give you the overall idea how we assigned event listeners to elements. We'll obviously get to more useful examples, but for this video, that should cover the concepts you need to know.